Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to XJW Diaries. My name is Justin. So, what is the real truth? Now, that is a question that played over and over in my head during my time of leaving the Jehovah's Witnesses. If this is not the truth, then what is? And I've heard from many others who have gotten caught on this exact same question. If this is not the truth, then what is? And really, it's not surprising. I mean, the Jehovah's Witness leaders spend countless hours trying to reaffirm in their members' minds that they are the one and only truth. In fact, the Watchtower even employs one of the most powerful tools of mental conditioning, which is repetition. Go to any Jehovah's Witness meeting and you will hear them say countless times the words, the truth. And they also use it in their day-to-day -day conversations. So over the course of life as a Jehovah's Witness, as you use these words, the truth, to associate with the organization, you are literally hypnotizing yourself. But when you really dive into that word truth, it becomes very obvious that the Jehovah's Witnesses not only do not have the truth, but cannot have the truth. So let, let's do that. Let's dive into this word truth and see its many attributes that actually make the truth, the real truth. And you will see why the Jehovah's Witnesses do not have it. And you will see that they are using that word inappropriately as a tool of control. So if you are someone who is just now waking up from the Jehovah's Witnesses, hopefully this video will help you to be able to more easily disassociate the words, the truth from this organization, the Jehovah's Witnesses. So let's start with the factor about the truth that is so simple and yet at the same time so powerful that I actually decided to use it on the splash screen of every single video. And that's that the truth does not mind being questioned, but a lie hates to be challenged. The real truth does not mind being questioned because it knows it can stand up to anything, especially a lie. The truth does not need you to be afraid of questioning it, nor does it forbid you from questioning it. Whereas a lie hates to be challenged because it knows there are cracks. And the more it is challenged, the more those cracks will appear until eventually the whole lie comes crumbling down. Now the Jehovah's Witnesses claim to have the truth, but yet really their truth is just their doctrine that they force their members to accept as truth. The witnesses have built up an environment where certain aspects of their doctrine that they call the truth cannot be questioned. In fact, Jehovah's Witnesses are told, above all else, do not listen to apostates. But really, what is an apostate but someone who has dared to question this unquestionable religion? Another factor about the real truth is that it is unchanging. The law of gravity is an example of real unchanging truth. Wherever you go on this planet, no matter what country you are in, no matter if it's a first world country or a third world country, if you jump up, you will still come back down. If time travel existed, you could go back to the 1700s when everything about humanity was vastly different than it is today. But still, still if you jump up, you will come back down. Another example of unchanging truth is one plus one equals two. No matter what country you are in, no matter what time you are in, that is an unchanging truth. If you read Crisis of Conscience, then you know about the Malawi versus Mexico case. In that case, we see that what was true for one nation was not true for another nation. And sadly, this had a devastating impact. If you go on a time scale, the differences are even more drastic. What Jehovah's Witnesses believe and practice now is very different than what Jehovah's Witnesses believe and practice in the earlier days of the Watchtower. And if you go back to the days of the Bible students, the differences are even more drastic. I mean, can you imagine having Charles Taze Russell in the same room with today's governing body members? Can you imagine how that conversation would go? In fact, overall, if you compare what the Jehovah's Witnesses call the truth now, compared to even 50 years ago, you would have two completely different religions. Now, I know any Jehovah's Witness watching this will say, well, of course, things have changed over time because we've gotten new light. But here's the thing. Remember, real truth is unchanging. 
So just the fact that the Jehovah's Witnesses even have a concept of new light just goes to prove even further that the way that the Jehovah's Witnesses are using the words, the truth, is vastly inappropriate. And that's especially when you consider that a lot of these new light changes have been pretty major. For example, the new light on accepting blood fractions, after many people had already died for refusing blood fractions. Another example is the new light on organ transplants, which came after many people had already died for refusing an organ transplant. Now I could go on and on, but the whole point is that real truth, real absolute truth is unchanging. It just always is. Whereas the doctrine that the Jehovah's Witnesses mistakenly call the truth has changed many, many times. And in many cases, the changes have been quite major. So another factor about the real truth is that truth is authority, but authority is not truth. We can see this easily if we again use the example of gravity. The fact that gravity pulls things down is both a truth and an authority. Because that's the thing about the real truth is that it is so absolute that we have no choice but to work around it. Of course, in the case of the Jehovah's Witnesses, they believe the complete opposite. They believe that authority is truth. Now, just the fact that the Jehovah's Witnesses feel the need to have this much authority over their members' lives, that in itself should say enough. Now, another aspect of the real truth, the real absolute truth, is that in many cases, it is often far too big for humans to be able to fully grasp. This is especially the case when we're talking about the questions that religion and science are trying to answer. What is this? What is reality? What is consciousness? Where do we come from? Why are we here? These are all humongous questions. And right now in human history, we just don't have the technology nor the full comprehension to be able to fully grasp whatever that truth actually is. So all we're left with is beliefs, theories, ideas, and in some cases, even some small snippets of that greater truth. But in the case of the Jehovah's Witnesses, they believe that their perspective is the absolute truth. Now, the danger of only focusing on one perspective is that you're going to miss so much. Here is an image of a 3D cube spinning around. And as you can see, each side of the cube has a different color. So let's say that this cube represents the absolute truth. And so now we're going to take this 3D cube and we're going to drop it into a two-dimensional world. So all the beings on this 2D world can only ever see this 3D cube from one single perspective. And so one group of people standing on one side of this 3D cube sees the truth as a blue square. And the people on the other side of this 3D cube see the truth as a red square. And then you have yet another group standing at a different angle who sees the truth as a green square. And the issue here is that all of these different people fully believe that only their perspective is the truth. And that's one of the biggest issues with the Jehovah's Witnesses forcing their members to exclusively believe that their perspective and only their perspective is the truth. Because that's all it is. It's just a perspective. It's just ideas, interpretations from a group of men. That's all it is. Now, the interesting thing is that this is built right into the human psyche. You see, humans need this feeling that their belief system is the truth because that leads to a feeling of certainty. And that feeling of certainty leads to a feeling of security. And that feeling of security ties right into our human survival instincts. So when the Jehovah's Witnesses are forcing their members to believe that they and only they have the exclusive truth, they are really tying into something that is very deep in the human psyche. Now, another factor about the real truth is that the real truth does not require you to believe in it. In fact, you would not believe in the real truth. You would just know it because you cannot believe something and know it at the same time. To believe is to not know. Now, I'm not saying that there's anything wrong with having beliefs. I have my own beliefs as long as you recognize 
that they're beliefs. And there's a difference between a belief and absolute truth. And again, when we're talking about these big questions, what is life? Where do we come from? Why are we here? Huge questions, right? Neither science nor religion can offer you absolute truth. Religion can offer you belief systems. Science can offer you theories. But again, absolute truth is unchanging. So we see with religions, over time, they change. We see with science, as we get new technology, new understandings, those theories then change. So when the Watchtower is pushing their belief system on you, what they are really doing in plain English is forcing you to accept something that they do not know. The real truth is objective. Again, it does not need you to believe in it. It does not care about your opinions or your biases. It just is. And it cannot be twisted or molded or taken advantage of or used for control. But on the other hand, what the Jehovah's Witnesses mistakenly call the truth does require you to believe in it. And it has been influenced by biases and opinions, and it has been used for control. Another important factor about the real truth and kind of a preview for the next video is that the real truth cannot be owned. Again, this goes back to that thing about the human psyche where humans have this need to feel like their belief system is the real truth. But the real truth does not care about your feelings. It does not care about your belief system. It does not care about the human psyche. It just is. The real truth cannot be monopolized by an organization or a belief system. The real truth does not need an organization. In fact, just having an organization puts the real truth at risk for being manipulated or twisted because just by their nature, organizations are subject to opinions and biases and egos. So what is the real truth? Well, one thing's for sure. Based on what the truth actually means, based on the factors that are needed for something to actually be real objective truth, the Jehovah's Witnesses do not have it. What they have is a belief system, a doctrine that they force their members to view as the absolute truth. Even science cannot give you absolute truth. And many scientists, to their credit, openly admit that what they are giving you is a theory that is subject to change as their technology advances. So if anybody is coming to you and saying that they have the real truth, the one and only exclusive truth, well, you should probably go the other way, especially when we're talking about these major questions. What is reality? What is consciousness? What is life? Where do we come from? Why are we here? These are humongous questions. And these are questions that really expose the true scale of whatever that absolute truth actually is when it comes to those subjects. I mean, even science nowadays, top scientists, when you go to string theory, they're saying that it would take 10 different dimensions to make our third dimensional reality work. Quantum physicists go a step further. They say there is an infinite number of dimensions and universes out there. So even science at this point is saying there's something else. There's something that we cannot detect. Even in our day-to-day -day lives, there's so much that we cannot see. There's so much proving that we can't have the absolute truth. The human eye only sees a very, very small percentage of the visible light spectrum. So even if you lived in your house for 20, 30 years, you don't really know what your house looks like. And on a larger scale, with our current technology, we have the ability to easily send probes out into space and view the Earth from the outside. We have enough technology to send probes beyond our solar system and see all the planets moving from the outside. In fact, we have even updated our understanding of how the solar system moves. See, back when I was in school, the theory was that all the planets move around in a ring. Today, we now know that all the planets are being pulled by the sun through space, and they twirl around like a vortex following the sun. If we go on an even bigger scale, we have the technology to be able to observe and simulate the Milky Way galaxy from the outside. But here's the thing, no matter how far we send these probes, and science says that space is infinite and growing, if you can imagine that, but no matter how far we go, 
we can only send these things infinitely on the x-axis, infinitely on the y-axis, and infinitely on the z-axis. This is our three-dimensional world that we live in, our three-dimensional material world. We cannot send anything outside of those three directions. And even if we could, even if we could, would we even understand what we were seeing? And so the point is, whatever the real truth is, is far too big for our human minds or our current technology to be able to give us. And even if we could, would we really understand it? But one thing is for sure, whatever the real truth is, it is unchanging. It does not need you to believe in it. It cannot be owned or controlled. It just simply is, always has been, and always will be. Now, whenever possible, I try to be a fair person, so it wouldn't be fair to do all this talking about the truth without also mentioning something called relative truth, because so far we've only been talking about absolute truth. Although it is worth noting, by the Jehovah's Witnesses calling their belief system the truth, by using that word the in front of the word truth, they are insinuating that they do have the absolute truth, which we've already seen they don't qualify for. But let's just be nice to them. Let's give them the benefit of the doubt. Let's see if they instead qualify for relative truth. Now, absolute truth is just that. It's absolute. It does not care about your opinions or biases. It does not care about your personal experiences. It just is. It's absolute. There's no arguing with it. But with relative truth, now you have some room for opinions and personal experiences and your own biases. So, for example, 2 plus 2 equals 4. That is an absolute truth. It does not change. It doesn't care what you feel about it. It just is. However, if I were to say that Mac OS is much better than Windows, that, for me, could be a relative truth based on the type of projects that I do, based on my experience using both systems, based on the type of work that I need to get done, that for me could be a relative truth. Another example of relative truth is saying that a certain food is delicious, right? That could be absolutely true for you, but completely opposite for somebody else. Now, even though relative truth can use opinions and biases and personal experiences, there's still a couple important things that we got to take into account here to see if the Jehovah's Witnesses qualify. So number one is that relative truth still requires some hard data. If we again use the example of Mac versus Windows, I would not be able to say Mac is better than Windows if I had never used either system or if I had only used one system. It's because I have used both and have experience with both and have personally seen benefits for myself that that becomes a relative truth for me. Now, another factor about relative truth is that you cannot force someone to adopt your relative truth. So again, if we use that same example, if you love Windows, I cannot force you to love Mac. So when it comes to the Jehovah's Witnesses, we see that they cannot live up to either of these standards for relative truth, especially the one about not forcing other people to adopt your relative truth as their own truth. So as you can see, the truth, much like the word love, has been hijacked by the Jehovah's Witnesses and twisted and manipulated to be used for their own gains, to be used to control their members, to be used to set themselves up as an unquestionable authority. But when it comes to real, actual truth, the Jehovah's Witnesses do not have it. The Jehovah's Witnesses cannot have it. No organization on this planet has the real absolute truth when we are talking about these big concepts. So all Jehovah's Witnesses have is a belief system and a very corrupt one and a very toxic one at that. So hopefully for those of you who are just now waking up from the Witnesses, hopefully this has helped you to be able to detach that word truth from this organization, because that is a major, major step in the process of being able to free yourself from the witnesses. You cannot fully free yourself 
if you still believe that this organization has the truth. And this is also a very important topic for people out there that are pull me, physically out, but mentally in. That's an often forgotten about group. But part of the reason that they are stuck mentally in to the Watchtower is because they still believe that the Watchtower is the truth. So it's obvious that the leaders of the Watchtower know that there is power in words. And they obviously know that calling their belief system the truth gives something to their members that makes them entirely obedient to this organization beyond any question, beyond any doubts, beyond anything weird that may come up. They will be completely loyal to this group because they believe that they have the truth. But the real truth would never require that of you. So with all that being said, I want to thank you so much for watching. Thank you for your time. Please take it easy on yourself. And I will catch you in the next one. Peace.